Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, to the third talk and the last talk on basis of material science. Uh, uh, I have to repeat a few warnings and uh, comments about these talks. First of all, they represent my own personal views, nothing to do with the Open University. Uh, secondly, uh, unlike what the title is suggesting, I'm not going to teach a bunch of materials scientists and engineers in front of me the basic laws of diffusion, and I'm not good at all to explain what the happiness is, because probably I'm not the happiest person anyway. So. Um, but uh, what my aim is, as I mentioned in the first talk, knowing something is good, understanding it is better, feeling it is the best. So my idea here is that before jumping into the, some partial equation to explain the diffusion, to create a kind of a feeling towards the maths and the equation which are needed in order to explain diffusion in materials. So more than half of my talk will be tool making or building up some tools which are needed for explaining diffusion for for a student which nears zero knowledge about diffusion in materials. Okay? So please do not judge me based on the depth of the material, depth of the concept which I'm going to talk. But the, the technology, not technology, but methodology, methodology that I'm using in order to explain this, this kind of where to start. Actually, I decided to start to build up these tools uh, from a curve which I showed you at my very first talk. And the, what I was arguing that, uh, for instance, comfort in life depends to the amount of the resources you have. For instance, if this point defines the equilibrium point for me, let's say I have 1,000 pounds income, and which, which is enough for me to eat, to pay for my mortgage, and keep my car. If my salary increases, then I may buy Furuk's car. I get a little <laughs> richer, then I will buy Jefferson car. But as, as I get richer and richer, maybe in this stage I will buy a Lamborghini, as, as you see, it is it's, it's increasing. So your discomfort level will go down dramatically at that point. <laughs> Which one? Buying Jefferson car. With a Lamborghini, you haven't tried to drive one. No, no. <laughs> but anyway, I can show up. Then at this stage, maybe I can buy a private uh, island or whatever. Yeah, it, it increases to infinity. But if you go down, if I, my salary goes down, then I lose my car, I lose my house. Here I am sleeping on the street. And here, I don't even have enough to eat. Uh, as you see, the comfort is kind of a function which depends to the resources. And it is somehow is a state function. But is comfort really a happiness? Um, I don't think it is. I will make an argument. But up to this point, I accept that the comfort somehow is related to the logarithmic scale of the resources you have. As you get richer and richer, the increase in the resources causes less increase in comfort in a very, very nonlinear way. I need another tool. I have to explain what a state function is. A state function is, is a function which depends where you are. It doesn't matter how you get there. For example, the potential energy of this relative to the table depends to the height doesn't matter how I brought it up, it can be zigzag or straight up, but what matters is the uh, state, where you were and where you are, doesn't matter how you get there. So that, that's just the example of the state function, I need it. Now I'm back to the, to the, to the curve we had. Okay, um, comfort is a state function, but, and as I also mentioned that the I don't know the sensitive is the right word here, but the more comfortable people are less sensitive to increase in their level of resources, and that's very true. Maybe responsive or appreciative is a better word here, but I just put it sensitive according to this equation. But what the happiness is? Happiness is you are very comfortable here. It doesn't mean you are happy. So happiness is a different uh, feeling. Effectively, let's say maybe, maybe happiness is the change in the comfort. Basically, when you go from that point to other point. If that is the case, means that we have to look for happiness not on the black curve, but on the red one. Red one 
is showing the slope of the black curve. And that's what is called the differential equation of the ln x, which is if this is the ln x, so the first derivative will be 1 over the x, and that is the red one. Maybe. Maybe happiness is here. So that's why the person who hasn't eaten for three days, if you give a piece of bread to him, it will make him much happier than if you buy a Lamborghini for a very rich guy. So all of them is positive, still happiness is positive, but the rate is, is not the same level. Okay, let's say that uh, comfort is a state function, happiness, but happiness also is time dependent. I will, I will explain you why happiness is also related to the time. This guy has just won 10,000 pounds, <clears throat> yeah? So his state has changed, resources changed, and he looks very happy. If he earned the 10,000 pounds in one year, he wouldn't be that happy. <laughs> Would he? The, 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 the sweetness of the lottery is that it comes in a second. You, you read the number, you have 10,000 pounds in here. It's very different. So it's not only the change in the comfort level, but it depends how fast the, the level of the comfort is changing. So according to this theory, now we can come up with kind of equation. It says that, yes, happiness is the change in the level of comfort against the time. The time shorter, you are happier. And comfort is depends to the logarithmic scale of the resources. Okay, uh, let me explain a little, because I need this tool for the diffusion in materials. Time I mentioned, because the money is gained in a short time, is, is sweeter than the one which is in the long term. And also, if you give this check, 10,000 pounds, to Bill Gates, you will not see this smile. Because the Bill Gates resources, is, this number is so high, that the change in the resources is, is not noticeable for him. Yeah, he will not be that happy. So that, that is the, that's the one main lesson to learn. Okay, let me give you some sort of explanation. Your first car, your first house, your first kiss, your first child, income degree job. You will always remember those. The reason you remembered it because it was the first one you were here. The slope of the curve. It, the first everything will be remembered because there is no there, is, there was nothing before that. And that's why the level of the happiness will be very, very high. Uh, I don't know how much I convinced you. But anyway, from me is the partial differential equation which relates to the logarithm scale of resources against the time. Okay? Ah, that is the equation. So, some application. Happiness is a transient phenomenon. Changes by time. So what they say they lived happily thereafter is a me. It never happened. <laughs> because it's impossible for anybody to live happily thereafter. They say, oh, and from today we're going to be happy after. Because happiness needs change in the state. It is not a state function. A little bit, I couldn't resist putting this up anyway. This is the classical explanation about the heaven, yeah? You go up the stairs. I think they should put an escalator because, <laughs> <laughs> because it will be difficult. Here. But anyway, that, let's, let's look at the heaven, the way that they used to tell us, yeah? What heaven is, Eternal comfort for 100%, yeah? And the resources are unlimited. For example, in a very, very unlikely event, I go to heaven and I ask for, let's say, hot chocolate or pina colada, they are not going to tell me, oh, sorry, we don't serve pina colada on Thursday. <laughs> because if they say that, then that would not be heaven, right? It has to be everything abandoned, timeless, forever. But according to our equation, if that is said, Definitely, heaven, there is no happiness in heaven. Because its state is the same. It will not change. Definitely will be boring. Actually, I think in hell will be more happiness. Because <laughs> once, the, once the daily torture is finished, <laughs> you are happy that until following morning, you are okay. Yeah? So, no, definitely, I, I really believe that. Okay. Another, a bit more, less... Uh, there's a more serious application. Camping. I think people go to camping, yeah? The best, why do they go? Because they are bored at home. They decide to go, let's go camping. They go camping, they come back to the same house. You see, a state function, because they are back to the same state. But 
they are happier. <laughs> Why are they happier? Because they realize that doors, cookers, and toilets are very useful. <laughs> you see, this is important because if you are bored and unhappy at home, all you have to do just go a little bit backwards and then come back and then you will let the slope changes. You have to reduce your comfort and then increase suddenly. The whole family will be happier after camping anyway. More than during camping. Okay, that, that was my introduction in order to, to explain that in nature, it's not important that much where you are or the absolute numbers. What matters is, is the change. Let me explain it. Let's back to diffusion. We, we have two different materials. Let's say one of them is hot, other one is cold, or one of them has got large, higher concentration of solute, other one is less. It can be a two different country, and these are the people trying to immigrate from one rich country to the poor country, and this is a barrier like a visa system, or it can be a thermal barri barrier in the basically turbine blades, you're trying to keep one part hot, other part cold. But all is a diffusion phenomenon. Migration, heat transfer, and solid heat transfer, all of them is about it. Okay, we know that if we put hot to the cold next to each other, hot gets colder, cold gets hotter. It never happens the other way around. And the solute goes from the high concentration to the low concentration. Why? Because we explained this at the first talk very well. That was the second law of thermodynamics. Every system moves towards to increase its randomness. So if the system will be more random if the molecules move to the right hand side. Yeah? We explained that before. Okay, it's obvious that the amount of material which are crossing the border depends to the difference in the concentration. If the difference is higher, there will be more flux of material or heat or people across the border. It is very clear that is the first subject. And again, this explanation, so you have a gradient in whatever, it doesn't matter anything, it can be a wealth, heat, solute, everything, and then you have this gradient, and that causes the movement. If the gradient is zero, no, no flux. And also, if the gradient is constant, whatever coming into this sort of volume and goes out is the same. If the flux in, out is the same, the concentration here stays constant. And that defines the first law of heat. It says amount of material depends to the concentration gradient. D is a material's property. And for example, aluminum diffuses in copper much, much faster than copper in aluminum. That is a, that's a diffusion code. In the, in the heat transfer is a diffusivity function. This minus is always used to annoy me a little bit. Why we need this minus? Because they define the concentration, low concentration minus high concentration. So this term is negative. That's why they balanced it out with another negative sum. But that's not the concept. So this is the first level of the differentiation. But more fun when we go one step. What if the gradient is changing? See, this is the entry and this is the exit. So the, the slope of the curve, which is going into this volume, is higher than here. So what happens that the concentration or heat, whatever we're looking at, is going to increase in size. So basically, the second law, it says the amount of change in the concentration depends on how fast the concentration Changing the concentration against x is changing against x. How, how dependent is the slope to the x? But the slope is also dependent on the x itself. So it gives you the second order of differential equation. And that defines the second law of the fix. So obviously here we have an element of the time. Again, remember, if this was a straight line, this would be 0. So the change in concentration would be 0. So as you see that when the... Te when the at the initial stage, you have very low concentration at this x, this is the x. As the time passes, this curve starts to spread out. Please remember that we are not talking about the quantity at all, we're just looking at the differential equation, we're just looking at the rate of the change. 
Um, and that defines the second law of physics, that the concentration at the time tends to the second derivative of the x. Okay, that was the differential equation. Uh, let's, uh, let's find a solution for it. Um, in order to solve the differential equations, you have to define the boundaries. For example, I go back a little bit here. For example, okay, we want to solve this. To solve this, we have to give the system how much in initial concentration was, what was the time we started, how much we already had in system, etc. Those conditions which define the sort of starting points for every differential equation is called boundary or initial conditions. Anyway. So one, one application is that, for example, you have a very large bar and a very small amount of material at one end, and you heat it up and you let this basically disappear or diffuses inside the material. If you solve the fixed second equation, you will end up with this solution. This is a general solution which says that the total solute, which is constant, it will be used up. Depends to what? Diffusion coefficient, time, and distance. So, again, this is what my teacher used to teach me, and I, I didn't like it because it was a little bit too long. I don't know, it had the same feeling when you are undergraduate or not. But, but in order to touch the equation, we have to look at it a bit more carefully. You see, as the material diffusing inside, by the time passes, more and more material you get in here, right? That's the that part, which is nonlinear. I put this here so you can see how unlinear is the exponential. But on the other side, there is a depletion or depleted source because you're losing the source as well. And that's the other part. You see, these two parts are working against each other. One is increasing, the other one decreasing. And that's why when the system starts to go down and down, not only diffusion gets slower because of the because of this exponential as goes far further, further it goes slower, slower but also you are losing the source. So I'm just trying to build up the idea that when you're looking at the equation, try to, to translate their language. So this is like a counterbalance here. Okay, now the question is that, what if the source is infinite? So we had unlimited amount of the source on the other side. You see, I am just playing with the same differential equation, but I'm just changing the boundary condition. Now we have unlimited amount, and in order to explain the unlimited amount of the sources, I need a new tool. So new tool is basically to solve the equation, because the, the equation will be completely different when it is solved for unlimited source. Okay, I came up with these pictures in a rush. So, Let's say these are the activities we have, we wake up, yeah? Polishing shoes, a little bit exercise, washing clothes. Makeup or cleaning your house. But have you noticed that, for example, if your car is very muddy, you wash it for five minutes, it makes a big difference. Next five minutes, less, far less. Next an hour, will not be noticeable. It's the same for everything else. So what I'm going to introduce in math is the story of our everyday life. But sometimes it scares people off. It's called error function. Error function, as you see, please forget about the negative side. I didn't want to delete it. Only look at the positive side. First of all, it changes on between 0 to 1. So maximum is 1, 0 is 0. So basically, it goes from nothing to 100%. Yeah? But interesting is that. Look, it gets almost to 99.9% when the value of the x is 2. The same story with washing your cars. When you wash your cars, first 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 1 day, 1 year, 100 years. If you wash your car 100 years, people will not, maybe you would take the polish out anyway. But anyway, so as you see, the same story with any other activities. There is a there is an effective sort of uh, time or effort you can put in it. After that, you're wasting your time because this flats out very very quickly. Please remember, this is not the equation of the logarithmic scale. Logarithmic scale it can go to infinitely high. 
this one stops at one. So that's why also when you get, that is the definition of obsessive people. Obsessive people try to get to this point. You can't. Mathematically is impossible. So that defines it. Why did I need that? Because you can guess it. Because if the resources are infinite and the diffusion is going to this side, please, this is the starting point, zero x t, t x zero. After a little bit while, as you see, the material starts to diffuse inside. And the solution to the fixed equation is this one, the zero function. So as you see that as diffusion it carries on, yeah, or let's say look at the x first, as you go away from the interface, this number goes towards one. Therefore, the concentration at that point relative to the source concentration, which is constant here, it goes down. And that is the, uh, basically what I'm trying to say, diffusion from infinite solid to infinite solid is a bit similar to polishing your shoes. The first goes fast, but then it slows down on a very, very drastic level. And that's it. And so, engineering application, yeah? Let's see what are the applications for this error form. Let's say you want to carburize iron. You want to diffuse certain elements on the surface of the iron, yeah, or, or steel. So you don't want to wait for 100 years. So you have to have a some sort of ballpark figure how much you have to wait. So but let's, look at the, let's look at this equation. At the distance, for example, x, if it's equal, what, what you can control is the time, basically, and temperature, which let's say is fixed. So here, it gives you some idea. We are looking only at this part. What if x is equal to this, to the time? For example, you can calculate where x put half a millimeter and the time put two hours, yeah? And in that scenario, the concentration at that particular depth will be almost half of the maximum concentration you can get. Basically, fortunately, it's easy to remember. Error function of half is half, it's here. If you're looking at a higher depth of the penetration of the diffuse element, as in this case, you are going to here. This is, if x equal to this one, this will be one. Error function of one is, I don't remember, 0.85 or 86 something, and 0.84 is here, as you see. So please look at this. by. Increasing the distance from the source by a factor of two, look at how much reduction you have in the concentration. Concentration goes down from 48% to 16%. If you increase to even higher, then you will see that even more and more difficult to get that kind of diffusion. So effectively, this is just the presentation. These equations are very useful in materials metallurgies because it, they can give you kind of a feeling how many hours you need to penetrate, I don't know, carbon for 100 microns. Very easy. It's a, it's a very rule of thumb, but it's very useful. Normally, above this level, it does no engineering application because this will take far too long to do that. Um, I'm hoping to be able to show you a little bit. Okay, and here, this is a simulation. This is the concentration of the unlimited source. Here we have nothing. So watch how the concentration build up against the time. So have a look. This is as the time passes. Concentration is increasing, but the speed is going down very, very fast gets slower, slower, and slower. And that's just following error function. Again, just one, once more. You can see it comes very fast. Again, I'm, I was trying to tell you that it's a bit like uh, washing your cars, you see? That was the whole idea. It goes very fast, and then it slows down. That is the, this is a very useful, uh, you can also have all sorts of, um, for example, you can have a two, two-side diffusion, and also play a lot with it. I mean, there are many, many options. Too. You can have a diffusion from both sides, but the equation is pretty much similar. 
okay let's go back to so that was the engineer okay if you don't want to remember anything about this talk please remember at least this equation is very easy your distance of diffusion time and that the material property you have it gives you some 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 places they call it char characteristic diffusion distance right okay this is what i showed you and let's do a little bit other application in solidification and for example the solid is liquid uh, is uh, material is solidifying so you have a moving boundary the solid liquid boundary is moving but because this solidification requires the realignment of the solute so the solute has to be basically ejected into the liquid so in front of the solid liquid boundary you will build up a diffusion layer yeah if this diffusion layer is faster and faster so then basically diffusion coefficient is fast this moving boundary can move faster and effectively it will be something like that if the diffusion coefficient is very low it gets flat out so it slows down the movement of the of the interface so um, one question is how we can change this diffusion layer or diffusion coefficient one is the prop materials property let's say we can't do it because we are bound to stay with the same material but how we can increase the amount of diffusion because without the diffusion and ejecting the solute into the liquid you will not be able to solidify the material one way is that the increasing the surface area let me explain in nature how does it do it i mean how it does it is that for example rather than solidifying on a planar interface it breaks down to integral in, in, in dendritic growth dendrites are basically nothing but increasing the surface area of the diffusion very simple i mean nobody in the nature nobody tells them you know what to do they go to minimize their internal energy so when you when they grow as a dendrite they have much larger surface area and then the faster rate of the diffusion of solid basically dumping the solid into the front of the liquid of course there is a limit because they cannot go too fine because the surface area is increasing again is the balance between the liquid solid surface energy and basically going faster faster with diffusion so it finds a very good balance so that defines the uh, dendro how fine or how coarse the dendrite is there are other elements like a super cooling etc but you can look at it look at the dendrites as like a um, sort of a way of increasing the diffusion rate this is the back of my car and it's frozen and you see that it generates this nice pattern yeah it is similar to dendrite yeah but the question is that here there is no solid almost yeah? it's, let's say it's, it's a pure water the question is that why this is happening um, or this is happening these are like a uh, ice crystals for me the answer is that very first i gave it there is not that much difference between diffusion of heat or diffusion of solid here there is no solid but system is trying to release heat so the diffusing element here is not the solute but the heat we use the very same concept in our everyday life radiators radiators are we basically copying from nature is the same as the dendrites in, in snow crystals basically because as you see by increasing the surface area we improving the diffusion of the heat percent so dendritic growth happens either in a alloys or pure materials when they are super cool okay i have a habit of the ending my talk uh, um, by introducing the scientists i've done so i kept the best for the last talk i think shirley knows who is i think the definitions i believe most influential human being ever the way we live now the auto him he is i think this is the translation i found in internet but i prefer to say that the genius that we will never see anyone similar to him ever in terms of the, his what he did and 
not only because not only because of this exploration and explanation of nature more than that because this was the man who gave human being a tool to discover the nature and to harness the nature you saw a very very tiny amount of his work when I was explaining the change in the comfort relative to time is the happiness or the diffusion in the, in the materials yeah what he said is not the absolute value what matters is the change how things changing how change is changing second degree of differential equation and that is the that is the most important thing in, in understanding in nature I mean without him fix wouldn't be able to come up with the first and second law because it is always the guy who started first in terms of looking at them. This equation, this famous equation, yeah, force is equal to mass acceleration. I think if we want to communicate with aliens, yeah, and we are supposed to tell them what we understand about nature, we should send them this equation. This is the utmost important equation. And also I like it because those who, those who claim to be saint or believe in miracles should be tested by this equation. I'll tell you why. If they think they are sane, put them in a box and drop them from high, high altitude and then measure the acceleration and open the box to see how much left inside the box. So I call it the saint buster sort of equation. Anyway, so nobody can survive this equation, I can tell you for sure. But Let's, for the last time, look at it from different, what he says, mass, what acceleration means. I have opened it up as a differential equation. But look at it from the lifetime, life perspective. X is where you are in your life, in your wealth, in your family, everything. Change of X to time is how much your speed. Like a, you are driving speed like a driving a car but spending money on a high-speed car is a waste of money because you're already traveling hundred thousand miles or kilometers per hour and you don't feel it do you but the second derivative how fast the speed is changing against time that is the way the forces come from and that's a very I, I find it a very beautiful way of looking at it it's not important where you are how, how much your speed is it's very important how fast your speed is changing. And that's the fun. Okay, my last slide. I don't know. It's become like a wedding. I think some people expect me to finish it with something funny at the end anyway. So these are the celebrities, yeah? What they are famous for. And Huh? <laughs> yeah. But what, what they are famous for, or infamous for, having uh, too many relationships, I think eight marriages, Elizabeth Taylor, I think this guy, 11 <laughs> partners in the same time, uh, something like that, yeah, Th these are facts, yeah, and the other thing what we know, unfortunately, very sadly, that some of them, they end up their lives, yeah, kind of, and this one as well. So th this is what happens to them, and it's quite common. And to conclude my talk, I go back to my first talk. I'm trying to say how maths can explain almost everything. The first Boltzmann equation at the first talk, I proved that your relationship depends to your bond and how many options you have. These people have far more options than we have. I don't have the number of options Tom Cruise has. <laughs> so, it is very... I, it is reasonable to assume that this can go up and breaks down the relationship. This is the bond to the person and this is the options you have with other relations. So, that is why they are in more danger in terms of not being able to have a stable life. But today's talk, I add the happiness equation to that. Happiness doesn't depend on that increase in the resources. It depends how much is changing with the time when the resource is very high, when they reach to the height, there is no change. Still, resources are very high. 
but there is more changes. And the happiness goes down, it can go to zero. It, it, it is not the cause of all suicides, etc. But it gives you some kind of idea of where, where these things come from. So the bottom line is that uh, um, in life, according to what Newton said, it's not important where you are. It is important which direction and how fast you are moving. That is the definition of differential equations in life and in material science. I rest my case. For you. <laughs> Last talk was too long, so I shortened. <laughs> okay. Fine. I have a meeting at eleven, so thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.